well done on making it in um, and jumping on the screens on such a beautiful evening. Done. All right, team. I can see everyone jumping on. So I am going to kick things off. A huge welcome, everybody, to our webinar this evening. Whether you are a Pilates instructor or you've been thinking about joining the industry, there's something in tonight for you. Um, and we are just so happy to have you join us tonight. You might know that this is part one of our three-part Spring Pilates webinar series, which is all about fresh inspiration and bringing that new energy into this Pilates community that we love so much here at Unite Health. Tonight, we're diving deep into how to make money and thrive as a Pilates instructor. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means shortly, but I can promise you we've got a really rich hour planned with such an incredible lineup of guest speakers. Um, before we go any further, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land that I'm working from tonight. I live in Geelong, so I'm on Wadawurrung or Wadawurrung country, and I'd like to extend that acknowledgement to wherever you're working from and joining us from this evening. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. So my name is Alex Wall. I first entered the fitness and wellness space about six years ago as a yoga instructor, um, but I've been teaching Pilates for over four years now throughout Melbourne and Geelong, both in studios and with private clients. Six months ago, I joined the fabulous team at Unite Health as general manager, and it's just been such a privilege to witness so many Pilates students and teachers on their own Pilates journeys. Um, if you're not familiar with us at Unite Health, we are Australia's number one Pilates teacher training provider. Um, our expert instructors teach the APPI method or the Australian Physiotherapy and Pilates Institute method, which means our courses are really bedded in the science of human movement and written by physiotherapists. Um, our course is designed to be comprehensive enough so that you can leave industry ready upon the completion. Uh, a team at the United Health, this team is so passionate and dedicated to movement, to Pilates and helping people become the best Pilates instructor they can be. And tonight, this webinar is all about us trying to live up to that mission. So here we are, how to make money and thrive as a Pilates instructor. What does that actually mean? So make money is pretty obvious, um, but it doesn't really get spoken about that transparently. There's a lot of big claims out there at the moment about what you can and can't do as a Pilates instructor. Um, and sometimes it can also feel like the remuneration side of the industry is a bit secret or hidden. So tonight is all about being really open and transparent about the dollars. Um, we know it's an industry that's full of passionate people, full of energy and amazing lifestyle benefits, but it can also be a great financial situation too. And then what do we mean by thrive? Well, we give so much as Pilates instructors. We give our energy, our passion, our knowledge, our time. Um, but it's, of course, really important to look after ourselves. It's impossible to serve our community and our clients with an empty cup. We need a full one. And I'm definitely the pot calling the kettle black there. It's so much easier said than done. But I'm really looking forward to learning from our incredible guest speakers tonight about their tips and tricks for thriving and filling their cup. Speaking of thriving, I'm also really excited to share that we have teamed up with the epic brand Wild Mingo to bring you tonight's webinar. Wild Mingo was founded in 2020 to add a splash of creativity to the fitness industry. And you've probably seen their gorgeous Instagram or their website. They offer this beautiful range of fitness accessories, including mats and resistant bands that feature artwork by talented Australian female artists, which is so cool. Um, not only does it look amazing, it's fit for purpose too. So all of the products at Wild Mingo are tried and tested by fitness professionals. And the range is also made from recycled materials, which is just unreal. So um, an example there is the resistant bands. They're made from recycled latex and nylon. Um, so, so excited to be working with that incredible brand. Um, we've got some really special offers from our Wild Mingo friends a bit later on in the evening as well. All right, team. It is time to introduce our incredible guest speakers for the evening. Um, let's do it. First and foremost, I'm going to introduce our first guest speaker, which is the always glowing Sophie Appel. Hi, Sophie. Sophie is a dedicated Pilates student who took her passion for Pilates to the next level by completing her APPI Pilates instructor certification with Unite Health in 2021. 
yes, 2021, mid-lockdowns, um, one of those years that a lot of us would rather forget. But Sophie was one of those people who saw it as an opportunity to help people. So she launched this incredible Pilates Instagram account, hosted Pilates sessions via Zoom, and really provided that lifeline of fitness during those trying times, quickly fostering a really loyal community. Right now, Sophie, Sophie is the studio manager at Rise Pilates by 101 Collins Street, where she leads a dynamic team and oversees a vibrant fitness space. So welcome, Sophie. So excited to have you tonight. Thanks. Yay. All right. Our next guest speaker is the incredibly talented Denny McFadden. So Denny completed his APPI Pilates instructor certification with United Health last December. Besides teaching at Pilates Republic, Denny is also a model and a talented musician in a soul band. Wow. What's even more inspiring, Denny has mastered the art of balance, juggling his dynamic career with his passion for Pilates seamlessly. Hey, Denny. Hello. Thanks for having me. So great to have you. Amazing. All right. Our final guest speaker for the evening is the trailblazing visionary founder and owner of Wild Mingo, Candice Lester. Candice, Candice's journey is a testament to the power of passion and perseverance. With a background in corporate psychology, Candice followed her heart and embraced her love of Pilates over a decade ago. And since completing her APPI Pilates instructor certification with Unite Health last year in 2022, Candice has been teaching at KX and making her mark as both a Pilates instructor and a business owner. Unreal. Hi, Candice. Hi, Alex. And hi, everybody. I'm so thrilled to be here. So nice. All right, team, that is your incredible lineup of guest speakers for tonight. I've got one last introduction. You'll see a little square that, that says course expert. You can't see her gorgeous face, but I can assure you that behind that screen is our wonderful senior course expert, Laura, who's going to be answering all of your questions as they come to mind via that Q&A box. So feel free to pop anything in there that you'd like us to dive into. And if we don't get a chance to get to it this evening, we'll definitely get to it via our social media tomorrow. So jump on our Instagram and we'll answer any questions we don't get to tonight on our stories. All right, team, are we ready? Let's do it. We're going to dive right in and I'm going to ask all of you, I'm going to kick things off with you, Sophie. How many Pilates classes do you teach each week and how much do you earn per class? So at the moment, I actually only take, I'm going to say six to eight classes a week, um, depending on covers and privates come and go, but ranging between $60 to $100 per class. Mm -hmm. um, and that's changed heaps in the last year or so, but that's currently. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, great. How about you, Denny? I teach about 20 classes a week. Wow. And yeah, it's a good amount. It's a, it's a good balance. Um, and I make about $60 per class, pretty much that's standard for me. Yeah. yeah. Right. And Candice, what does it look like for you? Uh, so it's usually about eight a week on average, but it can go up to 15. It depends on what I'm doing for covers as well. So that's mm -hmm. either at my kind of base studio or also um, at a couple of other places. And yeah. range is anywhere from $40 when it's in a dynamic fitness class up to 75 Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, team. I'm just going to throw mine in there as well, just as another sort of point of reference. So I teach only covers in a studio environment. Sometimes I teach zero. Sometimes I teach 15, maybe 20 on some weeks. I couldn't do it every week, Denny. That's amazing. Um, and that ranges from 55 for a reformer class or 65 for a hot mat class. Uh, and then privates are anywhere from sort of that one to 150 mark. All right. So we've gotten into the nitty gritty straight up. Um, I'm going to throw back to you, Denny, um, and just sort of touch on, you know, being a Pilates instructor, we know it's all about passion, but it's also about making a sustainable living. 20 classes is um, an incredible um, amount to manage on top of your love for your own Pilates practice and your other passions. Um, how do you sort of balance that and um, that workload with your financial goals? Yeah, I think it's really doable. Um, 20 classes for me is like a good balance between, I'm not someone that like likes to work long hours every week. I did do around uh, 25 to 30 when I first started and that very quickly got a bit too much for me. But I do know of instructors that teach 35 classes every week and they're fine. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have to build up to that. But uh, in terms of uh, earning enough money to support myself, it's um, 20 classes is great um like 
compared to other jobs I've worked where I've had to work 30, 35 hours a week, Mm -hmm. it kind of comes out level Mm -hmm. doing 20 hours instead. And it's something I enjoy doing. So it's a huge win. So I've got plenty of time left over to, you know, relax, play music, like follow other passions as well. So uh, honestly, it's it's such a great balance to have. Mm. Amazing. Sounds like you've absolutely nailed it. Thank you so I'm much. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very inspiring. Um, I love to hear that. Thank you so much. Um, Pendice, a question to throw to you. There's, there's so much love for Pilates in the world right now, which I'm sure you're seeing both with your incredible brand, Wild Mingo, and also as an instructor. Um, and that growth is really exciting, but it also means it's an increasingly competitive space. So building that community and a strong client base is crucial. Um, what strategies have you found to be most effective for attracting new clients and retaining them in such a competitive market? Oh, a serious question on a Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> uh, so for me, um, and I approach my teaching, um, as, you know, as a Pilates instructor, as much as I approach it the same for Wild Mingo and around building community, um, I talk about Pilates as the thing that brings me joy. Um, and I teach for joy, um, but I also run Wild Mingo for joy as well, because we're trying to change the game and get more people excited about moving their bodies. And so for me, it's around bringing that energy and that excitement into the connections that I have. And that's the people I meet on the street. So I'm sorry if you've met me somewhere on the streets in Melbourne. <laughs> I haven't, you know, talked to you about Pilates or, or Wild Mingo, but also um, in my classes. And so the thing about attracting clients is obviously, you know, there is this buzz. And so we're seeing this great uptick in people kind of coming for the first time. I think programs like Class Pass are really great for attracting new people who are kind of a little bit uncertain, wanting to try out a dynamic class or even... Um, Um, gyms who are starting to put on more and more like map based classes something super easy for them given they have the space but it's not just about attracting a new client it's really keeping them and um, I think for that it's about getting to know people and sharing that joy and excitement and why I love it and why I do what I do Um, and I actually um, and this is like no joke I taught a whole bunch of classes this morning and I had a client at 6am tell me that she set her goal to be more like her Pilates instructor and I like I had the biggest blush and then I couldn't teach for like the next day <laughs> and I was like I'm not going to name her but I um I said what like what do you mean and she said you just have like the energy and the excitement I was like it's because I really like being here and I think when you've got um something that you're really enjoying um personally because I'm a client turned trainer um you know, I did Pilates for a decade um, and I just enjoyed the experience of being able to move my body, to be mindful, to, you know, create um, space for me, you know, 45, 50 minutes. That was just my time. And I try and think about that when I'm designing classes, when I'm teaching, but also I think about that when I'm working on pieces for the brand as well. So what would I as a client like? And then try and channel that to bring people in and, and sort of connect in with them, right, um, as humans and, and sort of spark a little bit of joy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. And having met you, you are goals. So it doesn't surprise me that a client said that to you, but um, that's amazing. And I guess like, like you were saying, that's the the joy and the passion, isn't it? Of the industry that we get to soak up every day. You just meet so, so many cool people. I think that's the other thing is like, you know, I have the most interesting clients too, right? Like they've got the best stories of things that they do outside of their 50 minute block around the rest of their lives and just getting to hear that and, you know, hear about their families and their pets and their career goals and their travel plans. Like, it's just awesome to get to meet, you know, so many new faces um, multiple times a week. Yeah. Incredible. Very, very cool. All right, a little more context setting, Sophie. I'm going to throw to you, um, building on this idea of building a strong personal brand to set yourself apart in a competitive market, reading your bio and learning more about you and what you managed during COVID was incredible. Could you share the steps you've taken to develop your unique personal brand as a Pilates instructor? Yeah, for sure. Um, It's kind of funny because I was really nervous to start up a Pilates account initially. Like I I didn't know where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do with it, but I um, thought given that we were all in lockdown, it was a really great opportunity to help me learn and grow as an instructor, but also just help my friends and family initially come and join in classes. And at the time, I think I did like two weeks for $2 or something. Like I was charging nothing just so that I could get something out of it. And I was taking three or four classes a day. I was like six and 7 a.m. classes and then a couple at lunchtime and I was like, jump on where you can. And it was really um like only a few people to start with and then I ended up doing it for I don't even remember it was like months 
because of lockdown, obviously. And, um, yeah, really cool because I ended up having close to 40 people on some days and it was because friends would tell their friends and then my family would go and tell their extended family and be like, oh, my, you know, whatever. And it was just through word of mouth. But I think I tried to make every class really different and people um, would say to me, like, this is crazy that you're charging, like, nothing and we're getting a new thing every single day but it was really really helping me to grow um so I think initially it was just nice because it was a community and we could all kind of chat on zoom and um everyone got to know me through my instagram but through zoom and I thought that's kind of it I thought I'd just leave it at you know maybe 500 followers that were mainly my close friends and family and um but yeah from there I've just kind of gone off with the same energy I feel like I've been quite authentic the whole way through I don't I know that there's a lot of people out there doing Pilates accounts and it's it is a very competitive place I feel if you're wanting to do really well but it's also amazing like the community on there and how many people I've met online and then caught up with since and um you can go to people's classes and people you get yeah get to know people from all over the place and, um help cover to that as well so I think yeah, that's just kind of been me, <laughs> as cringe as that sounds, but like, um, yeah, not just, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Oh my gosh, it's so inspiring to hear that story and those themes you touched on around authenticity and being genuine and being yourself. That just rings so true, doesn't it? I think about the accounts that I engage with on Instagram, particularly for Pilates content. It's always the ones where you feel like you can resonate um, and you're getting the real person as much as can be possible through the social screens um very cool and very really brave like you mentioned as well to like okay I'm scared I'm gonna throw myself in and do it anyway I actually want to say one thing about that because it was a huge thing that stopped me from not stopped me but nearly stopped me from doing it um mm-hmm. but I the reason that I made a separate one to like my just regular personal Instagram which I know people combine theirs and that's also amazing but I was just like, you know, if people don't care about Pilates, they don't have to follow me. They can just look at my personal thing. Like, they don't have to care about it. And then turns out this is done way better. So it's just like, I think that's the best way to look at it. Like, if people don't care, it shouldn't phase you because they don't need to look at it. <laughs> just, yeah, what you enjoy. Yeah. I love that. I feel like already that theme has come up of joy. Like, everybody's sort of kind of touched on that in some way, shape, and form, which is so cool. Um, all right, let's go back to the dollars a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with Candice and then throw it open. What are some creative ways you've expanded your income streams beyond traditional studio classes or one-on-one sessions? And that can either be within the Pilates space or beyond. Awesome. Um, so I know everyone wants me to say Wild Mingo, but I'm not going to say that um, because that was that was something that was brewing. But what I have done with that is use that to my advantage. So now we do studio takeovers as part of the business, which is an awesome way to showcase our products, but also to partner with amazing people that I've met throughout the Unite program um, and also just in general um, in this incredible community. So we do really cool takeovers with our props and our products. We get people to try them, to play, to experience them, because that's kind of half the fun. Uh, and then, um, you know, we're available for sale and those things too. So that's kind of one really different income stream so if you're thinking about you know businesses relating to your apps and those sorts of things as well if that's sort of similar to sofra how can you think differently about how you reach the masses and maybe it's a separate account um but for me also with pilates um i do work in corporates but of a slightly different nature so working with corporates to be thinking about the importance of mental health and well-being and that's the corporate psychologist in me right so we talk a little bit about the joy of movement so i'm going to use that word again alex um and run sessions around well-being and that might be a pilates class or a couple of classes for a corporate but it also could be a leadership development program um and so being able to leverage what I understand around how our bodies work um, and how and also what I know already from how our brains work and combine that as a pretty powerful force. Mm-hmm. And then the other part um, that I do a little bit of is work with studio owners um, and people who are really passionate in this space about wanting to run retreats. So helping them think a little bit about what a retreat could look like, what would be the types of things. So I've kind of, it's like a little bit of uh, cheeky event planning, um, but thinking about that from the context of kind of holistic health um, in particularly corporate um, type A personality. And so you'll often hear me talk about, if you come to one of my classes, you'll probably hear me say that being on a reformer is the best 
most mindfulness and meditation that you're going to get if you're a type A personality. Um, and I really subscribe to that because you're going to challenge your balance. And so finding ways to work with people who are super busy in their everyday uh, and who need that opportunity to take, you know, a, a little bit of time to themselves um, and using Pilates as a vehicle to do that. But when it's in their workday uh, is a really powerful tool as well. And then all the standard stuff, you know, teaching, et cetera. Love that. Oh my gosh, your creativity knows no bounds. That's incredible. Um, Sophie or Denny, do you have any any other um, opportunities to add or any other um, income streams you've sort of expanded into um, beyond the sort of traditional studio classes? I Sorry, I don't want to jump in over top of you, but um, just kind of expanding from what Candy said, I've only done a couple of these, but um, events for like a Ken's party or birthdays, um, mm-hmm. That's really cool if you can promote that you're available to do that and that's another way that you can kind of increase your rate a little bit because it's for an event and you can either charge per head or um, mm-hmm. depending on how far you have to travel to do it, that kind of thing. So I've done a couple of those, which is really fun because everyone's always in such a good mood and it's just like a really enjoyable space, especially when it's mm-hmm. um, a nice day if it's outdoors or something. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also I'm still very new to all of this, but um, through Instagram, again, through collaborations and things so if you if people reach out to you saying that you know they want you to like move active for example it's a um grippy socks brand I'm sure a lot of you would have heard or um bought their socks but they yeah I work quite closely closely with them and their activewear brand as well and it's just like I love wearing them and it's I can just put them in my videos which is awesome and then I give out a code and if people use that code I get 15 percent of the Mm-hmm. Yeah, commission which is cool um and it doesn't really change anything for me it's, I'm doing the same thing that I would be doing anyway but it's just another um, form of income yeah great very cool very savvy I love hearing that yeah. we have to tease something up with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, Denny do you have anything to build in that well uh honestly I just like earning in a wage <laughs> so working in studio classes I find that really that's really great for me um I guess a lot of my other energy goes into stuff like music so you know um that I guess that comes back to you know Pilates instructor by day musicians by night but um yeah I I really enjoy just working my set hours and then if I need to pick up covers I'll pick up covers um but of course it's very possible to well I feel like I'm one of the few that uh, really isn't like pushing massively on social media and that kind of thing. But I feel like uh, most Pilates instructors will always head into that field. That's for sure. I'm sorry. I'm going to step in because I also don't want it to sound like you have to do this by any means because I also have <laughs> so many friends and so many colleagues that ha- that would just could think of nothing worse and they're doing way better than I am. Um, but it's just like, just for people listening, not not you, Denny, obviously, but just um, yeah, only if you feel comfortable. But it's not; yeah. it's just like an extra bit of fun for me, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yes, absolutely. I can. There's a massive appeal, of course. Mm-hmm. It sort of sounds, Sophie, like what you were saying before about just doing what you enjoy. And it's like people don't want to engage; they don't have to engage. And it sounds like there's so many different ways to approach it. Um, you know, which is just great. There's room for everyone, right? And there's room for everyone's different styles to be really genuine and 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 put their offerings out there in a way that feels authentic to them. Um, Denny, can I ask you a follow up question just on your schedule, which is amazing? Can you talk us through a little bit about how you um, kind of worked up to a kind of twenty hour uh, twenty class per week schedule? Um, and are you sort of with the one studio, or do you split between studios? Can you give us a bit more of an idea of how that works? Yeah, of course. Well, I'll tell you the full story. So, like, as soon as I was pretty much ready, well, once I graduated and was ready to go, I started putting my name out there and it felt like within a week or two I had I had I was swamped like I I'd taken on a lot so I was working I think six days a week um like I I took on a job at a gym about four different studios in the northern suburbs of Melbourne so all over the place um which was great and like you have to learn to teach very quick like you're equipped really well from the course and then um, 
you're on the stage ready to go. That's kind of what it feels like. So that's, that was awesome. Uh, I did find that it didn't take long for me to uh, kind of, uh, I feel like if you're jumping straight into it, like a 25 hour week of teaching classes, you do get burned out pretty fast. So I had to scale it back a little bit and then find a good balance. But once you find that balance, you can then push forward and, you know, you could, I could easily ramp up a few classes a week now. Like I'd be pretty comfortable teaching 25, yeah. one day 30, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I do know a lot of instructors that teach 35 classes a week and they manage it pretty well, but you do need some downtime. That's as well. That's, that's definitely true. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. true. Wow. Incredible. That's such a good point about burnout. That was one of my questions actually. So I'm going to skip forward to it and throw it to the whole group because, you know, I definitely have experienced it. I've definitely seen it. Um, You know, it's unfortunately really common. I think particularly in the fitness industry, because we've got that, you know, high physicality of the job. We've got some really odd hours. It's often often like early starts or late nights. We're also trying to squeeze in our own practice and just can feel like there's just not enough hours in the day. Um, I'd love to ask, Candice, have have you experienced burnout? And if so, how did you manage it? And do you have any tips on how um, you might manage burnout in the industry? Um, So a slightly different answer. Um, Yes, I've definitely experienced burnout. I became a Pilates instructor to navigate that. (laughs) (laughs) that. Um, So I had had a pretty grueling corporate job for a long, long time. And then I've also been running the business too, right? So Pilates for me is really joy, as I said. And so teaching is actually where I get my workout in because when you're teaching, particularly if you're teaching a reformer class, I tend to find if I'm running a shift, I will get my 10,000 steps in in my shift. So I'm feeling great because I'm getting exercise. Also mat class, you're you're demoing. So you're doing a lot of that together. Um, And this was a space for me to actually kind of give my brain a little rest. And so I'm sure there'll be people on the call that maybe aren't wanting to do the 30 hour week thing on the teaching and maybe this is a bit of a supplement to their career or equally it's sort of like an addition or or maybe a career change and you're feeling a bit nervous um it's been the best fun to be able to do that and actually my my whole health has benefited from that because my physical health has gotten better um I've also then been able to you know I I practice because I want to do more classes so that I can write better class plans um and so the the burnout is probably less from the industry um side of things for me and actually more from I guess the the way life was working before I became an instructor and before I did the program what I will say is to Denny's point as well um you do need to have some boundaries and you do need to have downtime. It's super exciting when you first join and um, you want to cover all the classes that everybody asks you and be super helpful and, and it is tremendous fun. But equally, you will lose your voice if you're not careful. Um, you know, you will end up working a really late night and then forgetting that you have a really early shift. And so um, being able to just be really mindful of that, which is absolutely, you know, fun to do for a little while, but it's not the most sustainable. So working out what boundaries work for you. And if it's a 35 hour week of classes, um, there are so many people that absolutely thrive in that space. And then if it's, you know, an an eight to 10 hour week of classes, um, you know, you can be supplementing your time doing all the other things in your life and and kind of your career and work as well. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a different burnout answer. Sorry, Al. No, I love that. No, no, I love that. And actually, having had the pleasure of meeting so many um, current students and graduates in the last six months at Unite Health, I, that's a really common theme. It's sort of like, I need something that's more going to bring me more joy. It's going to be more energizing. It's a job I want to wake up and love going to. Um, so no, perfect answer. No, no wrong answers. <laughs> it also means yeah. I don't have to sit at my desk, um, you know, during those eight hours a week. And I know that sounds like a small thing, but I was someone who, you know, pre- COVID was walking incidentally steps like between five and 7,000 steps by, you know, by pure accident. And I went to a space in COVID where I wa- I walked maybe 52 between my, you know, bedroom, study, kitchen, and then back for the whole day. So being able to teach in that way, it's it's been really helpful because, yeah, that's eight hours that I move my body more than I would have, you know, if I was sitting in my corporate job. Um, and so just small things like that, that you wouldn't even notice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. I would add, uh, oh, I found there was definitely a six month barrier kind of that once you get past that, I've spoken to other instructors and they say around that time frame where you, I think you save energy just because you instruct better, you cue better, and you also have less anxious energy going into a class. You just feel more confident. So 
I feel like a lot of that energy in the first six months is expended just on feeling nervous and getting used to the job, but you do adapt. So I would definitely, I wouldn't recommend jumping in like I did straight into 25 classes. I'd say build up, yeah. uh, slowly build up. That's the way to go or you will burn out. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but you can still make it through it. Yeah, that is such great advice, Sophie. I'm going to flick to you in one sec, but you just made me think, Denny, of all the different energy you need to think about. It's not just the physically showing up and the doing classes, but it's the the preparation, the nerves that can come into it, the class planning, the playlist planning, if that's part of your... Definitely. Yeah, class planning and playlist planning take up a lot of time, especially if you're teaching... Uh, it, well, if you might have to teach uh, multiple classes a week, you might not be able to teach the exact same reformer class. Yeah. You might have to teach, at times I've taught five different reformer classes in a week, which has been wow. like, I, like a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. But it's also about setting up the right schedule. So building up slowly, you can piece together a proper schedule and then you can teach the same class at different studios or... Yeah yeah, to different people without having to really be thinking all the time. Yeah. yeah, take that mental load away. That's definitely one of my tips that I've sort of figured out through trial and error. So I'll every Sunday night I write a class plan and it's usually based around reformer, but I know I can take it onto the mat. I know I can use some of those themes in my yoga classes. And then whether I've got two classes or 20 classes that week, I've based around that theme and it just takes so much of the pressure off. Yes. Yeah. And, and you can tweak as you go. That's the good thing yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like if I've read it and I don't end up using it, cool. That's just my my practice for the week. So it's all <laughs> it's all useful. Um <laughs> Sophie, how about you? Have you had any experiences with burnout? How would you um sort of describe your experience with it and, and how you've managed it? Yep, I definitely have. I was kind of going to expand on what Danny said. Um I Obviously, I'm not taking that many classes now, but when I finished, jumped straight into it. I got a job at KX like the week after I finished. I, I'd already organised it before I'd done my exam just to be like, I want to get in. I want to start working now. Mm-hmm. And I think initially I was doing 15 to 20 classes a week. I ended up taking 25 to 30. At one point in COVID, I did like 42 in a week because everyone had COVID. And I was like, yeah, I can do them all. And I was in like seven different locations. I was mm-hmm. from Sorrento to Camberwell. To, like, it was just so scattered. And after that, I didn't get COVID, but I had, I often get throat infections. So that's why I've also cut back because I, you can even see when I'm talking, I kind of strain my voice a little bit. So really important to not do that or not do that, but like learn how to um, just project your voice without yelling too much or without getting sick. Um, so it's great if there's microphones at studios, which I know a lot of them have now too, but I, I didn't for a while. Um, but yeah, I think I kind of had a wake up call when I was getting sick like every few weeks and then needing covers and I didn't want to let up anyone else down. So definitely experienced that. Um, and then I think that's where I kind of thought about going into more of a studio management position or doing a bit of admin work as well as teaching so you can break it up. But then again, getting away from the desk and teaching a few classes every couple of days is just really, really awesome. So um, yeah. That would be my answer to that. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like I think we've all sort of said it, haven't we? You kind of go through, you kind of, which hopefully people can learn from this and not do this, but it's almost like everyone's burnt out and gone backwards and be like, okay, cool. Now I can reset and calibrate what the right mix is for me. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that, you know, it can be a vulnerable topic because it can be a really horrible feeling, um, you know, when you're in that sort of just that drained, exhausted mode. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. Yeah, um, you've just got to cut back and then push through the barrier and you'll get there. That's what I'd say. <laughs> I love that. Cut back, push through the barrier. That's yeah. the slogan. That's going to be the slogan for the, for the <laughs> webinar. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to kind of round us back to just sort of those, all those different opportunities we talked about within the industry. So there's studio classes, teaching just with one versus with multiple studios, all of the other sort of online corporate collaboration stuff we've talked about as well. Candice, I might start with you. Do you have any, um, when you're sort of assessing these opportunities in the industry, what are the green flags that you look for and what are the red flags that you look out for? 
Ooh. So green flags for me are around how it fits in with my life. So um, what is that? You know, to Danny's point, like what's that barrier for me? What's that boundary for me? And being really clear about that. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people coming into industry as instructors, um, you know, even since I finished. But, you know, we're constantly seeing amazing new instructors um, coming in. So I feel like that also lends itself to, whilst it could feel like competition actually lends itself to heaps more opportunities, right? Because there's more studios opening all the time. There's more people thinking creatively. Um, and so for me, it's always around assessing does that opportunity really work for me um, if it's something that's being presented or if it's something that I want to chase after um, being really deliberate about that and then also assessing if there's a red flag um, so if maybe I think it's a really great idea and then I get a little bit more information and realize that actually it's one to put pause on um, and I've certainly experienced that sort of early on when I was thinking about where do I want to work like what studios do I want to be a part of um, and you know what shifts do I want to take and for me um, you know some of that is not a financial financial decision so as I said like this I do it because I love it or I work in a particular you know particular studios or spaces where if I worked for a private I would probably get paid a little bit more um in that sense but equally I have consistency and stability in, in some shifts and so actually that pays dividends because it gives me the space to work when I want to work so um whilst we're you know we're talking financial motivation as well. I wouldn't always look at a high price tag on a class um, allocation as a green flag um, because sometimes they actually add to the anxiety and the stress of class planning too. So um, it is a little bit of a kind of case by case basis. I think the other thing for me is also the people that you're working with, right? So getting to know the teams and the culture of either the clients if you're taking on, you know, more private, um, but also equally the studios, um, go and test them out, go and experience them um, as well so that you can see the type of vibe that you're getting yourself into, um, how people talk about the other trainers and the, you know, what the, the students are sort of saying about classes. Um, and it's sort of like a little bit of undercover sleuthing, right? So, uh, uh, yeah, so for me, it's, it's you know, it's, it's finding that um, path. But I will say, I just think there's there's so many green flags because there's just so many opportunities. So there's not kind of, you know, even between the what the four of us, none of us have the same kind of career conversation around our instructing and our teaching. Um, you know, and we all work in, you know, so many different spaces and there's just so much of that. So the kind of possibilities are pretty, pretty big. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Definitely more green than red, right? That's so cool. Um, Sophie, how about you? Any green flags that you're sort of always on the lookout for or any red flags you've come across? Um, I think green flags, definitely the, like you were saying, Candice, like the um, community and the just the vibe that you get from the places that you work. And that's why I initially went to KX because I, like you go with a client for five years before and I ended up getting, forming really good relationships with um, a few of my instructors. And then I was like, what do I do? I want to be the same as you guys like you're just amazing so um then they directed me to unite health and that was just all the connections are really amazing and i think it's good as well um to like to definitely a green flag if the studio is highly spoken about mm. by other studios or by unite health or by places and other people i think word of mouth is huge um mm. because you can also not that anywhere is bad but you can hear some really positive things about some places and then some um, slightly different and it's just good to listen to other people's opinions obviously make your own for sure but I just found that really beneficial for me um, I think I don't know I think it really depends on the person as well because for me now like I used to take six classes on a Saturday and that also used to burn me out but at the time I was like yes amazing six classes in a row like so great for the bank account but now I'm like I couldn't think I could not do it like I honestly after three classes now struggle so I think depending on where you're at, if you want a lot of classes and you want to make more money doing it that way, really great to go places where they do have heaps on the schedule. But then it's also good if you want a little bit more flexibility, um, you can go somewhere that, yeah, has a bit less or that it kind of breaks in the schedule. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love that. Yeah, great. I love such great tips. And, Denny, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I'd say that community is definitely such a big part of Pilates. It's number one. Uh, so having a good, well, finding a community that suits you um, Pilates-wise is probably number one green flag, that's for sure. In terms of red flags, I'd say the only real thing I've come across is being wary of just um, 
Uh, I've, I've found that in the past, some studio managers have been really pushy with trying to get you to cover classes when they should really know that you're not comfortable doing it when you, you know, you've said that or outlined that you're really busy and you're working all the time. And I find, yeah, that can be a negative of just getting asked to do things that they know you can't do, but you know, I don't work at that studio anymore. So you can, it's really easy to just, I mean, you, you can be pretty picky with where you want to work. That's what I've found. So that's a great thing Yeah. about, yeah, doing the course and then becoming an instructor. So. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just wanted to, sorry, I just wanted to expand on that as well. Um, it, I think working in a bunch of different studios to begin with is really great because you can, find out different types of management styles and different like working for different people um I know just different places that I've been some get you to find a cover for yourself and then others will say tell us we'll sort it for you like as soon as you say I can't do this I'm sick or I can't do this something whatever but if if they will sort it for you that it just takes a huge weight off your shoulders and it's actually it makes a huge difference instead of you being like, I'm stressed, I can't do this, but I need to find someone and I can't find someone, so I'm sick, but I have to go anyway and that kind of thing. So um, yeah. definitely good to just get experience from working for different people. Yeah, that's such great advice. I totally resonate with what you've both said um, around that covers culture, like when the chips are down or when you need a cover, whether it's an emergency or something's happened, what's the culture like then, you know, when it's not ideal and it might be a class that's that night or the next morning. Um, I'm really lucky where I where I teach. Everyone is just so supportive and jumps in and helps each other and the sort of management team do the same thing. But I definitely, like you said, worked um, like you, Danny, maybe worked in environments where that's not the case and there's a lot of pressure um, to sort of jump in. But at the end of the day, especially if you're there as a subcontractor, um, it's sort of, you know, it can be, I think, so you mentioned before just difficult to, to manage those boundaries um at times so yeah really great tips and I think just going in eyes wide open and um, particularly for anyone who's thinking about coming to the industry fresh that's just a really great maybe um, lens to have over over the any opportunities that do pop up um Denny you mentioned before that um you know you obviously you're all graduates from the ABPI Pilates instructor certification with UNAT Health which is fabulous um and I'd love to just understand a bit more from all of you. I'll start with you, Denny, just how you feel that the quality of the certification and the APPI method has given you a leg up in the industry. That's great. Yeah, a big time, um, especially, well, from what I've heard, or I haven't done any of the other courses, but um, all the Unite instructors that I work with and come across, they're all really highly regarded. They're highly trained. I feel like we just get that anatomical knowledge and the fundamentals down that just it, it makes you feel confident in what you're doing um you're not just teaching you, you feel like you have some sort of special knowledge at times I think walking in even if you don't have the confidence as a teacher yet you've got this knowledge that you know that um well because I was a client in the past I just felt like I was doing Pilates wrong the whole time uh well like once I'd done the course like it, it was just a different way of doing it and it just felt so much better and the people around you as you're if you're still a client and you've just done the course I just found like they they would have had no idea so it was just like I was excited to like share I guess the knowledge that you that I'd learned at the Unite course so you have that which is great even if you aren't the best teacher in the world it's such a great starting point and yeah I found that all the Unite teachers that I or people that have gone through Unite have just done really well um and a lot of other teachers that have done other courses they're still great teachers they've just I think they've regretted their choices um, with the courses they've done. But, yeah, I, I just find you do get a leg up, that's for sure, and it does give you confidence. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Incredible. Um, how about you, Sophie? Um, I also don't know too much about other courses, but I'm, I know that there's so many different um, ways that you can complete the 
mm-hmm. certification, which I think is really great in terms of flexibility and being able to still do your job if you want to do it kind of part time on the weekends or whatever. Um, and I did mine in the three week intensive, which for me was I loved because I just got it all done all at once and I had all of this knowledge that I didn't have before. Um, and it, it was funny you mentioned it because as a client, I thought I was, you know, I thought I knew everything. And then coming in, I was like, wow, there's so much more to it. Um, but I definitely think like all of the instructors, all of the facilitators are so incredible and so knowledgeable and really supportive. Like I think I almost felt like I became friends with them over the three weeks. And that, that was really, really nice for me because I wanted to come in. Like it wasn't like school or uni where you're dreading going in to learn. I was so excited every morning to get up and be like, yep, I'm there from nine till five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the connections in the community from Unite Health, I think was amazing too to have um people come in from different studios and chat about their experiences but then also even through the unite instagram i always see like job opportunities pop up so there's so many connections and you're obviously so highly regarded in the industry and i think that just gives you a leg up because everyone knows um who you guys are so yeah <laughs> love that it's so great to know, hear you um see all the job opportunities as well we used to um, have a job board actually on our website um, and the feedback that we were getting from a lot of our studio partners was that maybe um, you know people were sort of jumping on there that hadn't done our course specifically and they weren't as industry ready as they would like so we've actually now moved that job board into a monthly email to our graduate database um, just with all of those opportunities so that we know that um, we're speaking to people who have absolutely graduated and and, and gone through the Pilates instructor certification um, and then also our studio partners are happy because they know that they're getting sort of the best of the best great so Candice how about you yeah I was gonna just add sorry I had to cough um (laughs) for me the so 100% echo what Danny and Sophie shared like um just the Unite course made me feel so comfortable um because then the thing that we probably haven't touched on um which might be a scary word for some people listening in that might want to do the course is the anatomy side of things and I think what the Unite and the APPI course does really well is it gives you such a good baseline on anatomy and you don't have to be an anatomy person don't let me um you know, don't be under any illusion that you need to know a lot about, you know, anatomy or, or anything like that before you join, you get all of that through the program, but it's incredibly comprehensive. I also like Sophie um, uh, did the three week intensive. Um, so it was, you know, lots of anatomy learning, but also lots of body movement and lots of playing. Um, and then there's also like recommended apps and tools and, and things that support you. Um, but I actually found that whilst it's intense you're so well supported by all the educators and the facilitators and just the unite team in general and also the cohort of people that you're you know studying with um everyone is trading stories and and there's so many different types of people that are in those programs too so we had people who had backgrounds in myotherapy and in physio and other things and then we had people who literally never thought about what muscles and bones make up their bodies so um it was really nice to have that range and to draw that knowledge um and learn together but that was just such a game changer because going into teach um you know early in my kind of graduate post-graduation I was cover teaching and just knowing the types of niggles and the muscles um, and the joints that were working. Um, and I was sharing this uh, with a conversation that Alex and I had, I think it must have been last week around just the surprise that I, I had around the number of people telling me about parts of their bodies that hurt and me knowing off the back of the course in the program, how to adjust for that really appropriately um, and how to find a solution. And that does not, you know, by no means am I a health practitioner and anything super serious, we would absolutely suggest that they go and see someone, but just in a movement um, when you're in class where someone says, oh, that's hurting a little bit more, just knowing how to kind of um, orient to that, knowing what muscle it's activating or why, you know, someone's calf is randomly hurting in something uh, where, you know, they may be gripping their toes or, or something. It just, it really does level up the way in which you train. Um, and I think, you know, for those of you that are thinking about the program, the next couple of classes you do over, you know, the next few weeks, maybe just listen out for your instructors who are talking about that. There's a pretty high chance that they're a Unite Health grad because um, I think it is something that's pretty unique to what this program does. But I get so much value out of that, like every single day. Um, yeah, so absolute game changer. Yeah, we were having that anatomy chat, weren't we? I think probably nine out of 10 students I come across are sort of like, oh, anatomy, like it's sort of a bit of a necessary evil in this study context. But I, I agree with you. I think you, you actually, I, I found I've retained so much more than I think at the time. I'm sort of like, 
you know, daydreaming about the reformer days on the intensive or daydreaming about getting into the mat work. But later on in class, it, I just feel like I can offer um, uh, cor- uh, alternatives and modifications to people so much more confidently and know that I can keep clients really, really safe by having that knowledge. And it's not something I sort of overtly think about. It's just at some point decided to stick. <laughs> um T, this has been so inspiring. I feel like we could keep chatting for ages. Um, I am going to wrap us up with one last question and throw it to the group, um, and it's a big one, so I'm going to answer it first to give you a little bit of thinking time. Um, but I want to end with sort of looking back on your Pilates journeys to date. What is the one piece of advice you wish you had received when you were just starting out as a Pilates instructor, or what is that one piece of wisdom you'd like someone who's already in this room, in this industry and looking how to thrive? Um, what's that one piece of wisdom you'd share? So I'll start. So you've got a little bit of thinking time, a little bit of thinking music. Um, mine's pretty, I'm going to say boring, um, a bit of a closet spreadsheet lover, um, but get the admin sorted. So, you know, I know um, we had a couple of questions pop up in the chat during the night around being a sole trader. What does that mean and what does that look like? So you can, yeah, run as a sole trader. You can run as an individual subcontractor, have an ABN. So you need to apply for one. It's really easy, but it just is an admin step you need to take. Um, You need to have your ABN and all your invoices if you're operating as a subcontractor make sure that you ask those questions about how often invoices are paid, whether it's sort of a weekly, a monthly situation, so you can sort of budget and plan. Um, Make sure that you've got things like your insurance sorted. So usually you'll pay your insurance annually. I think some insurance providers have more like a month-to-month payment plan. Um, Make sure you've got your first aid certificate and your CPR. Um, They're the sorts of things that along with having a really strong globally recognized certification are going to help you walk into any opportunity that presents and even in the private space definitely in the corporate space and in most studio settings you'll find that those are the questions that you'll be asked hey I need your invoice and if you've never had to write an invoice before you might not know what it needs to look like you know so um, just asking someone who you know in the industry um, or googling it um, we've got some great resources as well on the website so um, sorry mine's a little bit boring and administrative but that will just mean that you've got more energy more headspace to dedicate to the fun stuff the joy of Pilates. <laughs> all right I'm gonna I'm gonna flick to Candice to kick us off for this one um I knew you were gonna do that (laughs) (laughs) so I think for me the thing I wish someone had said was to be really deliberate I think as I alluded to it's super easy when you're first out of the the program to just jump at everything and I think you know Sophie and Danny have talked a little bit about this as well right like you ramp up and you are taking 25 35 classes straight off the bat um I actually had said I didn't want to work at a studio when I graduated from the program I wanted to just be a cover teacher and that was kind of how I was gonna live my life as a little bit of a nomad um in the Pilates industry and that lasted uh, I think maybe 48 hours um (laughs) and I don't regret it for a second and I still get to do a little bit of that um in terms of cover and, and you know teaching but I think the intention behind the decision when you graduate is really important and so knowing what that is and what you're getting into like I shared before around like if you are going to go and work in a studio what's the commitment that they're asking of you because that also is just as much of a part of the conversation and I'm super lucky that you know the studios that I train at um, the studio managers and the studio owners are so so supportive of all the other things that I do in my life and um, we have a really happy balance around how I can make sure I'm you know there and really present Um, but you know equally not every studio is like that and so being able to kind of take stock and um, you know I count my blessings that I got super lucky in being able to do that but um yeah not every studio is like that so take some time to really think about it and assess it and I think the the second piece I'm going to give to is go and do a whole heap of classes from trainers and go and pick trainers you wouldn't normally um experience or go and pick trainers that maybe you didn't enjoy uh and do another class with them and try and figure out what it is that you really love about the trainers that you love and also what is it about the trainers that you maybe don't love as much um because that's going to help you as you are also becoming an instructor thinking about the way in which you want to teach the way in which you want to train people um and I think just overall just makes you a a better trainer and I'm really sorry so for Dan if that was one of yours (laughs) (laughs) Go for it, Danny. Give us, give us yours. Oh, for me, definitely getting the balance right early on and having time for yourself. 
So I found very quickly everything in my life was just Pilates, which is great, but you do get really tired really fast. So just have some time for yourself. That's always a good idea. That and learning how to pre-cue, that's probably a good one as well. <laughs> I love that. I love that. We might be yeah. able to get into that in the next webinar. I love that. Um, yes. Sophie, how about you? Yes, I think expanding on what you've all said, um, definitely what you mentioned, Alex, about the ADN stuff and your organising the admin side of it and the finances. I got a very rude awakening when I had an incredibly large tax bill that I, I I had actually put a lot aside, but not quite enough. So I think really good to just figure out how much needs to go to tax, how much needs to go to super, and just put it in a separate account. That helped me massively. Um, that was a big one because I know a lot of people that actually do nothing and then yeah, get hit with a huge bill, especially if most of your work is ABN uh, contracted stuff. So that's a big one. Um I think don't sell yourself short, especially when you start out. It's really easy to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'll just ch charge me $15 for that class and someone else might charge 50 or whatever. I think it's good to just do your research and find out what people get paid for different types of things and know what you're entitled to so that you don't give, because, you know, we use a lot of energy, like we've seen with all of the class planning before, and, you know, it's a lot of time that you then need to get or obviously as you get more experience it, it comes a lot more naturally but I think that's a, a big one as well yeah I love that such that's such a great call about the separate accounts and the tax that's definitely a bit of a shock sometimes if you're not across that and on the front foot, um, I just noticed one last question that came through um, that I'm just going to quickly answer. Thanks so much, Jen. Yeah, look, I would say 90% of the teachers that I know in studio um, that are in that sort of sole trader capacity uh, are in that sole trader capacity. And yes, that is definitely on you to have your own insurance. So I, I think I pay about $300 a year. I can't remember the exact provider off the top of my head. Does anyone have any sort of different experience to that? Mine, I feel like mine's a bit less. I'm with Aon Insurance, but I think it also depends how much for each. Yeah. Um, I know one of my, I'm employed by one person now, so she pays gotcha. a lot of my insurance. So I've just got to cover like a little bit in case. So I guess it just depends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Aon was good. Cool. I'm also Aon, Soph. And um, the other thing I was going to say is the, do your first aid course. That's my other piece mm. of advice for everybody um, because it's the first question you get asked when you want to start working. So like book it in as soon as you've done your exam um, so that or book it in before so that that way you're kind of, you tick that box and you're ready to go because you won't be allowed to teach without your insurance and your first aid as a cover or in a studio. Yeah. It's really easy as well. Really easy. Yeah. Great call. Great. Um, thank you so much team for jumping in that. Gosh, I wish we could keep going. This has been so insightful I'm personally feeling so inspired I'm sure everyone who's tuned in is as well um, I'm going to wrap us up just with a final couple of words and a few um, of the special offers that we've got to reveal so um, first and foremost if you're inspired to start your Pilates journey by from tonight or if you're thinking about learning um, more about our courses or more about some of the continual development courses that you can do if you're already teaching um, please head to our website or our Instagram book a time to chat with our course experts Laura and we've also got Alex in the team so um, yeah, you've got some really friendly Pilates lovers on the other end of those phones who are going to answer every single question that you have. Um, I'm super excited to announce as well, if you enroll in our APPI Pilates Instructor Certification by the end of this week, you'll go in the draw to win a wild Mingo bundle to get your Pilates journey kickstarted. That includes a gorgeous mat um, and a stunning resistant band. So thank you so much, Candice, for supporting us with that. As if Candice couldn't be more generous, she's also um, giving our community 20% off. So use the code UNITE, U-N-I-T-E. You'll also receive an email after this webinar with all the details, but use that code to get 20% off the Wild Mingo range, which is just gorgeous. If you haven't checked it out, definitely pop that on your uh, scrolling list to check out this evening. Um also an opportunity to practice what we pe preach. We've talked a lot about burnout and a lot about um, looking after ourselves tomorrow, as you probably know, is Are You OK Day? And we've got our incredible educator, Re hosting a live Instagram mat flow at 4 p.m. Um, so this will give you a taste of our teaching style if you're new to our community. Um, and it just gives you the opportunity to kind of take some time for yourself and do something that we all love. 
Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to our Unite Health team, Laura, Alex, Catherine, um, and our community queen, Marissa, who is the brains behind this entire event. Um, we have our next webinar in this three-part series coming up next month. You'll receive all the details about that after this evening, but um, that one is all about how to level up um, as a Pilates instructor. So um, really exciting opportunities to chat through there. Last but not least, a massive thank you to our brilliant guest speakers. Thank you so much to Denny, Candice and Sophie. Um, you've been so generous in sharing um, and your tips and tricks have been so helpful. I know I've definitely pocketed a few to take off um, into my uh, evening as well. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful evening. Enjoy what's left of this sort of balmy evening. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for Bye. Having. See ya. <laughs>